you cannot be afraid of God's impact in your life. Because when he comes, he doesn't do little dabs to do you. He comes to drench your life with him. He comes to push you out of the waiting pond and throw you off on the deep end. Anybody ever been thrown on the deep end of the pool? Every fear that ever came to you will show up on the deep end. As soon as you hit that water, you hear all kind of voices. You ain't going to make it. You're going to drown. But something kicks in called survive. And if, even if you got the dog paddle your way up out of there. I'm coming out of there. Quitters drown. Amen. And what God has called you to is the deep end of the pool. As a matter of fact, he keeps calling you until you come up out of that water and stand on it and walk away from it. We got any winners in here? That's what the blessing does. It shuts the door on losing and leaves you on the side of the door called win. Amen. Galatians chapter chapter 3. Let's look at verse 9 uh, and a few other verses. This is our springboard scripture as we've been talking about the power of the blessing. This will be the impact of the commanded blessing. Verse 9 says, So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Say, I'm blessed. Lean over to a couple of people and tell them, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Verse 13, God, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So you don't have any association with the curse. You're born again. You don't have any association with the curse. The moment a person gets born again, they are the effects of the redemption of, of Christ takes them away from the effects of the curse. They are now under the blessing. They just got to learn how to live it. Amen. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. And verse 29 says, and if or since you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You are what? Abraham. Who's Abraham's seed? Abraham. Who? Abraham. You got to start saying that. I am Abraham's seed. Why? Because I am in Christ. When you're born again, your life is hidden in him. And so you have the word of God, so you have to start declaring it. If you want to see it manifest, it's, you've got to start declaring it. Over in Genesis uh, chapter 1 and verse 28, it talks about uh, you know, when God blessed Adam and Eve. There he conferred the blessing on them. And to confer means to bestow as a gift or a favor or to honor. But in Deuteronomy 28, wow, in verse 8, it says that God commands the blessing on us. Might as well turn and look at that. There it is. It's on the screen. The Lord will command. Everybody say command. command. This is not a little gift. Now he is commanding it on you and nothing can stop his command. The Lord will command the blessing on you. Not just floating over your house. But it lands somewhere. Your store, are y'all looking at the scripture? Where is it going to land? How many? Yeah, it's plural. On your storehouses. And, as if that's not enough, and in all to which you set your hand. If you don't do nothing, nothing's going to happen. 
That's why the enemy slithers up to people and starts saying, you can't do that. You didn't, you didn't graduate. You dropped out of college. There is nowhere in the scripture that says you will be a success if you go to college. It's good to go, good to learn, good to get degrees and so forth. But you got to understand it's not by my ability that I succeed in life. It is by the power of God. So I got to learn how to cooperate with the power of God. As much as you know, you don't know enough. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. You don't have a storehouse, you need to get you some. I don't care if it's a shoebox. Fill it up. If you got one of them buckets or whatever you put change in, fill it up. Amen. And to all to which you set your hand and... He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Do you have some land? You need to ask the Lord, the land that I have, how, how, how is it supposed to be handing something back to me? You're supposed to be experiencing increase. Okay. If you had a thousand acres that's wooded, do you know what's on that land that will yield you a profit? If you can't see the opportunity for increase on what he's given you, you will always be looking somewhere else. Those trees will generate some nice income. But if you don't see that you'll start complaining and begging and pleading with God to bless you and he already has see we're waiting on the Lord to do something and we don't want to get in the word to find out what he's already done he's not making up anything for you he's already walked it out so he said he command the blessing on us to command means to enjoin to charge and to put in order. So the commanded blessing is a royal decree. Mm. A royal decree and an authoritative order that bears with God's eternal purpose. And it's commanded upon the obedient. Ah, on the obedient. See, we want to I'm going to obey God right here, but I'm not going to obey him over here. No, you're not obedient. You have selective. That ain't going to fly. You have to make up your mind, I'm sold out. Will you, does that mean you don't make mistakes? No. Anybody ever made mistakes on this journey? You don't quit. You made a mistake. Repent. Get back up and keep going. Learn how to do it better. Like when David, them, uh, King David and, 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 and the leaders of Israel, they wanted the, the tabernacle. I mean, they wanted the Ark of the Covenant uh, in Jerusalem. But it was somewhere else. So they got a cart, a new cart, got animals pulling it. And they're going to put the cart, put the Ark on the cart because they saw somebody else do that. Their enemies delivered the Ark that way. So they're going to do it. And they hadn't heard from God, the God of that ark, in a long time, been many years. And when they started delivering or, or, or transporting the ark that way, God woke up and killed somebody. And David got mad. Do you think God, God got bothered? He didn't get bothered because David got mad. He doesn't get bothered when you get mad. I don't like this. This don't work. You think God going to say, oh, no. No, he already set the order. And God told David, he said, you better go find out how to handle me. You don't throw me up on a cart, pull by some animals. Other nations that serve foreign gods, which they really aren't gods, because he said, I'm the only one. And if there were any other, I tell you, if anybody would know, I would know. And there ain't none. I'm the onlyest one. He said, they do it, 
because they don't know me. God didn't give his instructions to them. He gave it to his people. And David them parked that, that ark. They went back and they found out how to handle them. And the word came back to them and said, uh, God is blessing this man's house. That's where they left the ark at. So he's blessing this house and everything about it. Even the grass was growing. Thick green grass. His cows were fat. Everything was working because the presence of God, the ark, was there. God was there, and he's blessed. The blessing is wherever he is. And they're like, hey, we got to get everything. We got to figure out how to do this right because we need him where we are. And then they found out it was already written. This is how you handle God. This is how you handle that ark. You don't just run up and grab it. You've got to be appointed. Hello. And the ark must, must rest on the shoulders of the priest. And the long story short, they came to get the ark. Now they know what to do. And the Bible says every six paces or 18 paces, 18 feet, they went for a little, little ways and they stopped and offered sacrifice. Then they walk a little bit more, offer sacrifice. From, I think it was Obed Edom, uh, from his house all the way back to Jerusalem. That was a trail of blood. To honor God. That's what he wanted. And they did it. The sacrifices cost you something. Amen. Why are you telling us this? Because if you're going to walk in the power of the blessing, you're going to have to let the Lord change your present mindset. We're going to have to start thinking like he thinks. That's all right. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Look at somebody and say, it's for real, though. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 8, God commands the blessing on us. In the Message Bible, it says God will order the blessing on you, on your barns and your workplaces. So when you go to your job, you have to start saying, the blessing is on me, and it's going to spill over into the workplace. If you're blessing the job, guess who they ain't going to get rid of? I can't hear nobody. But if you don't know the blessing is on you, you won't say nothing. And if you're afraid to say something, then uh, you, you just kind of, you know, you want the benefits, but you don't want to say nothing. If it comes down to letting somebody go, you may be on the list. Well, I don't know how come the Lord didn't save my job. You didn't say nothing. I can't hear nobody. The Amplified, in that same verse, say, the Lord shall command the blessing upon you. And the New Living Translation say, the Lord will guarantee the blessing. So he's commanded it and can't nobody do nothing about it. And then it's a guarantee. What else do we want? Say, the blessing is mine because of Christ Jesus. And remember this, that a command always comes from a superior. So God has given you the command, and it is a charge that he has put in your hand. When you, you military folks, y'all know when you get a charge, you got to complete it. Right? Woo. So here's the impact. First of all, you got to understand that no impact is going to happen with you until you make a choice. Deuteronomy, well, let's go over to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. I'm just trying to lay out something here. Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And verse 15, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. This is the Lord talking to his people. He says, see, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, 
In other words, I've set before you cycles of blessing or cycles of death. You know, that's what people are caught up in, cycles. And that those cycles pass on to the next generation. Romans chapter 8 says, For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law of, of the spirit of life. That word law also means cycles. God's kingdom has cycles of increase, of, of, of more and more and more. That's the way the kingdom is. There's no lack in the kingdom. But if my mind is not renewed to how God operates, I'll be stuck in a cycle of death. Say, go to church. Love the Lord. But I'm stuck in it. That's why the breaker anointing is present. We just want the Lord to put a bunch in our hand, and we don't want to do what it's required for us to walk in this. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbors, I'm, I'm getting ready to walk in this. Look at verse 19, and then we're going to move forward. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Isn't that just like God? He said, here's what's before you. You got choices, but can't nobody make the choices, the decisions for you, but you. And then he gets up and comes around to your side of the table and says, choose life. That's the way he is. He's not going to do it for us. He gets as close to doing it for you as he can. He's made everything available through Christ Jesus. And he redeemed us from the curse. It's off the table. He says, choose life, but you still got to make a choice. But I can make a choice to not be obedient always. And the moment I do, I open a door. Because the Bible said the curse does not come without a cause. It can't just mess with you. Stuff happens because we open up doors. Amen. And we don't like to hear that. I just want the Lord to bless me. He has. We need to know how to, how to become aligned with the way he operates. Are y'all listening to me? So the impact of the blessing, here's one. It's going to come upon your life in showers. Go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34 and verse 26 says this. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. God said, you know, he told, he told Abraham that. He said, I'll make you a blessing. So you don't even have to try to make yourself. He has a blueprint, a schematic already with you. He's going to make you a blessing. You just need to cooperate with it. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. See, there are certain seasons of your life you need rain. You need the presence of God to rain in that season. And stuff starts happening. Yeah. There shall be showers of blessing. Say, I received the showers. Let me give you another scripture. I don't think this is on their list. Proverbs 16. I just enjoy chewing on it. Every time I see something about the Lord showed me something, I just sit up like a big kid and start grinning. I say, that's mine too. Proverbs 16. And look at verse 15. In the light of the king's face is life. And his favor is like a cloud of the latter rain. His favor. Wow. And the Bible talks about the former and the latter rain. His favor. His favor. So the blessing is going to come to you in showers. Here, here this word uh, 
showers means to wet, to saturate. So he's saying the, the blessing is going to begin to come down. See, this one thing to have a, a torrential rain. It's another thing to just have showers. It, torrential rain runs off quick, but showers get soaked up. The ground soaks it. And it's like, yeah. And the grass say, yeah. And the shrubs go, yeah. Can anybody stand a little, yeah. Everybody's life needs that. It's a refreshing. And the Bible says in Acts, the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. You're supposed to be in, in that refresh. It's supposed to rain on you. We're supposed to be soaked, saturated with the presence of God. Mm. And it means to provide in large amounts. So the blessing will, will rain down on you and then the Lord will provide you with large amounts of whatever it is. If the Lord's doing all that, don't you think it's okay for you to say it? The blessing reigns on me. See, folks, the first thing people will say is, you're just brag, you're braggadocious. You're full of pride. The Bible say low is the way. <laughs> if God doesn't want you to be soaked, why did he say what he just said? There will be showers of blessing. He didn't say you're going to create the showers. He said he does it. Does he need to be rained on? I don't think so. That's for us. Why are we running from it? Scared to say it. Because there is a link with receiving the impact of the blessing and you're confessing and declaring it. It ain't going to manifest until there's some declaration. It ain't talking about the blessing is mine. That ain't no declaration. Well, the Lord heard me. Who else heard you? The ones that need to hear you that's what you need. Okay, remember David when he was dealing with Goliath? He wasn't in a tent somewhere talking about, I'm going to knock your head off. I'm going to punch your lights out. You don't scare me. He didn't say, <clears throat> you come to me with sticks and a sword, but I'm coming. That's what we want to do. David stood where he could see him and he could hear him and everybody else in Israel, Israel's army, they heard him. They looking at him. They think he crazy. <clears throat> but he got, he got a resume. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't crazy if you got a resume. Saul thought he was crazy. He said, you can't do this. You're just a, you're just a kid. You're just a teenager. He's been a, a man of war since his youth. Oh, you're going to give him credit and won't even give your own credit. You're going to punish him because he ain't grown. Punish yourself. You grown. How come you ain't been a, a man of war since your youth? And David said, I killed, look at my, here's my resume. I killed a lion and I killed a bear. I did it by the power of God. And he is going to be like one of them. So he's going to leave the choice up to go live. You want to be the lion or do you want to be the bear? The end result is you be dead. That's the way you got to talk. That's the way you got to talk. Well, you know, Lord, if I had 400 more dollars a month, everything would be all right. 
And the Lord is like, okay. And so you waiting on him to just hand it to you. He waiting on you to start talking. And when you start declaring the word, the word is going to check you and say, now you remember, you, uh, you hadn't tithed in the last three months. Because see, the blessing will bring divine order. The, the, the blessing ain't gonna let you be no crook. Y'all ain't gotta say nothing. It's gonna bring divine order. That's part of the command. The command is order and bringing your life to order. And it's in the order of his kingdom. And when your life lines up with the kingdom, all the laws of the kingdom will work for you. So he told Goliath what he was going to do. And that's what you're going to have to start doing. You're going to have to start saying, well, you know, uh, I gave an offering. You're going to have to start saying that the increase comes, and it comes swiftly, and it comes now. Loose my increase. You have to tell the devil, back up. You ain't got no right to be up on my street. And let folks say you crazy. Say it's a good crazy. This is the kind of crazy everybody wants. Amen. Because God always had crazy folks to do stuff for him. David was crazy. You got to be crazy to be talking to somebody 10 feet tall. Got a man carrying his shield. He said, you coming to me with all that stuff, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And, and he said, come to me, little man. I'm going to break you in pieces and feed you to the, to the animals. He said, no, I'm going to take your head off your body. And you see that army over back there behind you? I'm going to kill all them too. I'm going to wipe all y'all. I'm going to do it. Little man. Why? Because it was impossible for him to do it in his own strength. God just needs somebody crazy enough to run with him. Look at somebody and say, run, baby, run. That's what David did. He took off running. He said what he's going to do, and he ran toward him and did it. That's what you have to do. I honor God with the tithe. I give him the first fruit offering. I've done what God said do. Order is in my life. The blessing is upon my life and working. You start moving to it. I am debt free in the Jesus name. I owe no man nothing but to love him. <laughs> Can you talk like that? Can you get your lips moving? Hallelujah. Woo!